Hey, welcome back. This shall be the third installment for Lexan bodies. We're going to finish them off, put some numbers on them, graphics, maybe trim and pin them. Uh, when I started, I didn't know about a company down in Australia that did a lot of graphics, and I went for a couple of years scrounging around trying to find people that had you know, good quality press on graphics and uh, uh, Bruce B told me about the outfit down in uh, Australia, I think it's Pato's place and he has no lack of graphics for all scales of about anything you could think of. If you want inside water slide he has them, if you want outside water slide he has them but for what we do for these racing cars we want pressure sensitive and um, we have to knife them out. They're not they're not pre pre knifed. So what we're going to do is get our best sharpie knife. And go at it. track of these things is where you cut them. Certainly for the most part, that one is now finished. Um, you could add other graphics you want, but if these are racing bodies, there really isn't much point of that. It looks nice and clean when it's standing still, and that's really you know all you need. If you start filling up the space with all kinds of other decals, then the paint gets covered up, and I think maybe you might have a problem seeing the car, especially really, really fast cars. So we will go through and do all the numbers on all these, and then come back for some other details. Okay, as you can see now, we're finally beginning to have something that looks like something. Um, just a few little numbers here and there, you know, it starts covering up the space, adding little details, giving the body some dimension. Um, these bodies here, for the most part, I think are done. I'm not going to do anything more with those. Uh, we will put some golf stickers on the golf cars, and I think maybe I'll put a few shell stickers on this car right up here. Can be done with that. Let's uh, look at our sheet and decide which size we want.
Alright, so here we go. We have ourselves a shell car. We can do the same thing with Golf. There's golf. We'll go back and trim out some Porsche emblems, the very small ones, and put on the fronts of the cars. Uh, maybe add another golf uh, symbol to the side, and maybe some other details up here and across the back. I believe we do have them finished now. All right, so the fantasy body's in the front. Nice, clean, and simple. A few little things here and there to kind of cover up some of the empty spaces. Uh, we'll put some shell stickers on this one to kind of give it a little attitude. Uh, all the Porsche bodies now have a little emblem on the front, a Porsche emblem. And then uh, the 917s are here. As you see, it doesn't take sometimes very much graphics to fill up space and create kind of an interesting environment. Um, these are all a little different, although the graphics on these may be period correct, they certainly aren't exactly correct for any specific uh, golf Porsche of the day, but it just gives you the idea of what it is, and that's all most people want. Um, it gets a little difficult with um, pressure sensitive uh, graphics to come up with uh, complicated scale appearing uh, liveries. It can be done, but it's a lot of work and uh, it doesn't exactly look um, that great because they are press on. You need to use the decals on the inside uh, to get really good um, scale appearing cars. However, the decals on the inside don't run well. A um, couple of crashes and a lot of it, on, it just starts cracking out on the inside. Uh, where these, they're much more tough. Um, if you don't like them, you peel them off, start all over. Um, so that's how that goes. Uh, Pato's Place, let's, let's have a final word about that before we move on to the next segment. Pato's Place probably is the best place to get your graphics. Uh, one thing, you, a couple things you need to know about them. Um, they do a lot. They do not do any special requests. So whatever's on the websites on the website, you send them an email with uh, whatever it is that you want. Um, you have to specify the type of graphic you want. If you want water slide for the outside, you have to say that, or water slide for the inside, you have to state that. If you want pressure sensitive for the outside, you have to state that, because if you don't state it, you may get something you don't want, and it's not his problem, okay? Uh, and then again, uh, on some of these graphics and kits, once you get them and use them, you may find that they're not exactly scaled 100% for what you may be, your particular application for some particular body. And here again, that isn't his problem. I mean, he's looking at the, the problem from a different way. So I learned over time with some things, um, that you need to be able to specify a reduction. Like you tell them you want uh, the set ABC or whatever and you want it scaled down 15 percent. He will do that and it will then perhaps look better on whatever particular body that you're you're doing. Alright, so we will let these sit for probably a day and let all the paint get um, hardened up and cured out before we start to do any final trim and pen work. And then we'll come back for that.
Welcome back to uh, Painting Lexan Bodies. This segment we're going to start getting into trimming and pinning the actual body itself. And what you see is pretty much all the basic tools that I use to get the job done. Other people may do different things. Um, starting off, I have a tech block that I put a chassis on and lay the body over it to kind of gauge where things are. Um, some standard fingernail scissors to cut small and curved areas, small straight scissors, tweezers, an exacto knife for trimming uh, the flashing, uh, a dental pick that I use to poke the hole into the Lexan, battery powered Dremel that's very important, uh, two things, there's a small diameter sanding drum and a larger diameter sanding drum, these two things are very critical in getting the uh, wheel wells to where they look right uh, a standard Dremel stone for uh, finishing off rough edges. Uh, we have our body pins in there. Uh, parachute tape, or you can use some other suitable heavy tape for the inside of the body to protect it. Um, uh, heavier clear tape for the outside to hold the pins in place. And then a pair of flat nose, nose pliers to kind of uh, press everything together, and you'll see how all that works. So we will get things set up and get going. Alright, first thing that I do is try to trim some of the excess off of this so it's uh, easier to work with. And that's what these scissors do here. I don't try to really trim them up high and tight at this point. You need to think about trimming Lexans as like giving a haircut. You can take material off, but you sure can't put it back on. So then what I do with these scissors is try to cut right around the line that's at the base of the mold. And get that out of the way. Okay, so it's beginning to look like something now. Alright, so got the basics done on those. The next thing is I will take and trim up the wheel well about 70%. Don't try to finish off the wheel well with scissors. You'll be frustrated, it'll look bad, you'll overcut material. There just isn't enough bad things I can say about trying to finish out wheel wells with scissors. That's what the sanding drum is for. And that's another one of those tips that Bruce B. taught us. And that's how his stuff looks so good, is that he worked it up little by little by little. So 
So what we're doing now, when we trim the wheel wells like this, we're trying to really get the material out of the way for the first cut with the Dremel. Um, and as you'll see, you'll get a lot of flashing related to that operation, so we're just trying to get a lot of that out of the way. Done. Get some of this trash swept up. All right, get our Dremel out here. You have to check to make sure the drum's running reasonably true because they don't always do that. thing if you haven't ever painted much or trimmed much maybe I should say trimmed much I would start off with a body like the 917 some particular GTP style body that has an open rear end um, it makes things easier to fit I can't exactly describe why but it just it just is these open rear end cars just work better. It goes faster. Right. And what you do with the knife, you go back in the wheel well, there'll be some flashing that the Dremel creates and just kind of scrape that off. You gotta be very careful not to get the blade into the paint, obviously. And Scratch your paint, or you'd be out with uh, the touch up trying to touch it up. Alright, so we got our basics done, and we will switch gears here and get it set up for the next operation. Alright, I think we'll work with the orange body. Right, I have a piece of uh, track, uh, a setup block, and I can't remember where I got it exactly. It may have come in a box of junk off of eBay or something, but it's primarily just for trimming and pinning Lexans. You stick your car on there, it has uh, rail sunk into it so the car stays put. Um, set the body over it. If you have pre-marked your bodies before you paint them. A lot of guys will take the Lexan shell, set it over, um, and take a Sharpie marker or something, or maybe even pre-punch the holes um, at this stage, then a lot of this is kind of uh, uh, immaterial. But the first thing that I generally do is stick it on the block and look at it relative to the front and back, however much I've trimmed. And on this particular set up you can see that the back is not completely trimmed out yet which gives us a little wiggle room. Now this particular body has dimples already in it so it's not a big deal to get the holes poked in.
Now at this stage I don't put the backer tape in yet and the body pins work better if they're pointed up. My wizard sells some brass pins. They're short and pointed. These aluminum pins that I sell, the uh, supplier couldn't, wouldn't, or for some odd reason didn't point the pins up. So you have to kind of put a little point on them before you use them. That's all there is to it. It goes better. Alright, so there we are. The body primarily trims. Everything's in place. So now we can start giving a haircut. And one thing I didn't point out earlier is a Sharpie marker is kind of important to have to make some little notes on the body as to how much more material you need to cut off. So you don't guess. Here again, you don't want to try to go too far with your cuts. You will have this body on and off the car a dozen times before you're done. Be patient. Don't try to rush it or you'll have a mistake. And that doesn't even mean I'm perfect because I've screwed them up. Remember, think of it as you're trying to give it a haircut. You can take material off can't put it back. Alright, so we had switched over to our larger sanding drum. And we use it for the front and the back. I mean, you can decide to do something different. This is just what I do. This is a method that I learned from Bruce. And there was never ever any problem with Bruce's work, so I figure if it was good enough for him, it was good enough for me. Back in. Alright, so we're still off just a little bit, which is good. We're right about where we need to be. This side's not on very good. This particular round may be pretty close to where we want to be. If you do them enough, you kind of get a feel for it. These scissors really do a good job cutting nice straight lines. It will take a lot of material off real quick. That's nice and straight.
All right, so at this point, I think I want to put the tape in. Now that probably 90% of the trimming is done, the tape will tighten everything up. Again, eyeball that out there. Let's see. That's about right. I think you probably have also figured out by now if you don't got good eyes or a good magnifier and a good set of tweezers, you're about out of business. And take the back of the tweezers or something to kind of burnish that down in there. The uh, Parachute tape, if you get the type that's not plasticized, it's more cloth based, it'll lay down a lot better. Uh, I think Wizard sells that. There's other stuff available and it's plasticized and it doesn't, it doesn't lay down well. This is pretty good stuff that they sell. At least the last batch that I bought. You know, things can always change between you know a year or two ago and now. What you gotta do, you gotta go back and you have to chase the holes. Put your pins back in. This is the stage where having the pointed pins is really crucial to kind of punch through that stuff. Alright. Alright, so that tightened things up a lot. Um, it tells me I need to do just another little bit of touch up back here. Take a hit right there, and I got to get that little area there trimmed off. Um, the front needs to come up some. We'll take the scissors to that. Nearly done. All right, the sides look pretty good. That one looks pretty good. 
I want to take off a little bit right in there. Now I have a dedicated chassis that I use for all this stuff so if it gets bugged up with you know dust or whatever I don't care um, if you only are doing it for yourself you may want to take the body on and off completely when you make any cut or grinding to keep your chassis relatively clean. I keep a vacuum cleaner over here um, to vacuum up dust as I go. I haven't used it during the operation here but uh, I do do that when I have a whole bunch of them to sit down and do to vacuum all this stuff and keep my workplace clean, keep this stuff out. So, all right, we're basically real close. Um, we'll switch gears here and um, pull out some touch-up paints, show you how to do that, and it'll be close to being done. All right, we've put our sanding drum back on, or, or actually we've uh, put our uh, final buffing stone on is what we've done. And that kind of cleans up the edges from the knife. The knife will leave some very small jagged edges around. Get some Sharpie paint pens. They seem to do pretty good. Come in a variety of colors. And I go back in and catch the edges of the, uh, the bodies with that because when you've cut this there's a clear edge and sometimes the light will kind of filter up in there and it looks a little odd and you can get some and you can do your pens cover them up make it look a little better so they don't shine If you get any of this paint on the body where you don't want it, just get some alcohol on a rag and it'll take it right off. Don't let it dry. Do it while it's still a little wet. But it'll uh, do a good job. All right, we're gonna let that dry. We'll come back for the final uh, fitting of the uh, the tape. Okay, final lap. We're gonna put side tape on here and secure the pins. So, any sort of suitable heavy clear tape will do. where tweezers are kind of important so you don't get your hands all over the stuff.
right, and this is where these flat nose pliers come into play. You have a way to burnish it down onto the body and seal it up. Now, if you're trying to do something that's more display oriented, you don't want to do this. But if you're going to race, you got to do this. Because if uh, the pins are even a little bit loose on a crash, you'll lose pins. So, pretty well done there. And you know, you might find a little something else that you might want to trim up here and there. It's just like giving a haircut. You look at, look at it and see what needs to be done. But if, if, you, if you follow what's going on, we just worked it all up, little by little by little. Um, there is no shortcuts, uh, short of some sort of body that's made for a specific chassis and everything's perfectly marked out and you can trim it all out and stick it on and so far I haven't seen anything like that on the market. Um, most of the Lexans are kind of universal for different applications, so you have to go through all of these steps to get the bodies finished off for any specific chassis. All right, we will come back with one final segment. We will look at a variety of uh, bodies that have been painted by different people and take a look at some techniques and close it out. Alrighty, final recap. We've got a number of different uh, painting techniques here to kind of uh, give you an idea of what, what can be done, what's out there. We had talked about decals on the inside. Um, these two bodies right here, I forgot just now who I acquired them from, but uh, I've saved them because of that. Uh, and if you have them in your hand and look at them, you can kind of get a feel for how they were done and how they were painted. But uh, generally, they look sharp, but they're not very uh, robust. These are some examples of hard bodies where professional painters have done decals on the outside. These are water slides that have been clear coated. This is probably the kind of stuff that's available from Pattis Place. Um, there is a fellow on eBay that does this work. This is where I got this particular body. I forgot who I got that one from, but this one here came from a guy on eBay and uh, does a very good job. And you know, it's, it's a piece of eye candy, these things. You don't really want to run them much. This is an odd thing I came across. It's actually water slide decals on the outside that maybe it's kind of easy. The problem with it to protect the decals you have to spray the body with something that doesn't dissolve the decals. Generally if it's a clear lacquer the lacquer will dissolve the decals so the the old school way was to spray uh, future floor wax on it. Kind of there's a way to dilute it and then spray the future floor wax over the top of it and that would protect it. Uh, then of course we have the one that we just finished. This particular body here is an example of uh, hand painting graphics with the uh, one shot sign painters paint. This was done by Jarris Watson out in um, maybe it's Washington. Um, I can't remember what state he is out there. He primarily does 124th bodies but he's really uh, a true artist in every sense of the word. So this is an example of uh, using the one shot. Um, and it actually does run well. This stuff sticks and doesn't chip off. We get over to some work that uh, Bruce B. has done in the past. Um, and really, his work is the standard that I would compare everybody else's to. Other people may differ. 
there's a lot of people that would agree with me that have known Bruce and have seen his work and have had the pleasure of being his friend. His work, his race bodies were exceedingly simple, but they were so clean and perfect that they really were works of art in and of itself. And this is an example of one of his race bodies. There's just not cluttered with a lot of stuff. Um, I've noticed over time, and I might have even been guilty of it early on, to where if you don't paint well, you tend to cover up your body with stickers. Um, Bruce never found that that was indeed the case, that he needed to do that. Um, he just had a very, very good technique, understood paint, understood color. Uh, in the finish work, I even after all of the thousands of bodies that I've done, I can't finish off a body as perfect as he did. He just... It was just incredible, his talent. These are three bodies that he did with decals on the inside. It was very difficult to get him to do the work because it is a lot of work. Um, you know, I might have paid 50 bucks or something per body for it at the time, but, you know, once you go through all these steps, you know, $75 may not be enough money for the work for it to be done properly. And since Bruce's passing, I have not run these bodies. These bodies I ran on G-Jets or brass class cars so they don't have a lot of speed to crash them and screw up the paint um, but over time they have experienced a little bit of cracking this particular one here has cracked uh, in here and the decal is cracked off on the inside on that one the gulf I think I've got a little chip on the front where it's uh, come off if you were to put these on high magnet cars and run them you destroy them. But if you want, you know, somewhat scale appearing, you can do graphics on the outside. This particular body here is done by Mr. Bill, who used to sell a lot on eBay. I don't know where he's at now or whatever, but he uh, has really done a good job at doing uh, scale appearing work with the external uh, sensitive. Uh, pressure sensitive uh, graphics and they with something like this you can run it and crash it and it will hold up uh, because there really isn't anything to flake off but perhaps the paint on the inside. Um, here again these bodies are a lot of work and people do pay quite a bit for them when you get them um, but they, they do run very very well. Um, anybody on eBay that's selling a decal on the inside sort of body uh, and the price seems too cheap, it probably isn't a good deal. Uh, there's, there's a lot of work and a lot of steps that go into this work to make it uh, at least hold up just with under light duty. And if, if, if a painter isn't taking all the proper steps necessary, you put it on a high magnet car and crash it one or two times and it's going to look like uh, you know, a potato chip or like you just, you know, smash the body. So if you're going to run high magnet cars, stick with, you know, more plain Jane stuff that uh, is made just for racing. Uh, generally what happens with anything like this, although it looks cool sitting still, on a fast car you can't see it. The colors aren't bright enough. That's just all there is to it. Um, Alright, so that's all I have for this series of videos. I thank you for spending the time with me and sticking with me on this. I encourage you to just jump in and start. Don't worry about having necessarily all the right tools. A lot of it you'll get as you gain experience and motivation and resources. Don't be afraid to start. Uh, a lot of what I do is just what I picked up along the way. It may or may not be perfectly right in other people's eyes, but it's what works for me. It's, it's what I had available to me. And uh, I did have the, the honor and the blessing of knowing Bruce. That taught me quite a bit regarding this. And then you take his knowledge and you know your own personal um, skills and techniques and and move forward with that and you read and look at what other people do and try to incorporate that and you know you, you come up with your own set of uh, things that work for yourself so don't be afraid to try it start I mean a Lexan body itself is cheap they're two dollars paint isn't all that much it's just it's just really a matter of your time um, and a parting word um, 
to people that look at the prices of you know the better stuff, the finished work, uh, you know something like this. You know, to me, this is a twenty-five dollar item, uh, and that's there's just so much time and, and steps in it. There's really not even any profit at, at twenty-five dollars in that. Um, so people that don't want to pay that for a decent body, well, you know, you, you end up getting what you pay for. So any any of the painters that are out there that are doing better work uh, and their prices are you know in that range, don't beat them up about it. Uh, pay what they want. Um, it's what they do to buy groceries, perhaps, or fill in their uh, other day jobs or, and whatever. You know, pay the freight. Pay for good work with these guys. Um, if you're that stingy and don't, then go out, buy all the equipment, do it all yourself, and be satisfied. So, thank you for joining us.